Hey ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's just me again, and I'm going to see what I can do to help you guys understand this whole concept of figuring out what the current T-bill rate should be given this whole concept of a liquidity premium. All right, so we hopefully at this point know that a liquidity premium is what investors think they should get because they've got their money tied up. So it's the same idea of I should be able to get some kind of premium because I bought something at the store yesterday and today I go back and it's on sale. So somehow I've lost out. So if I put my money in a one-year T-bill that currently pays 3.35%, and a year from now, that T-bill rate is going to have risen to 3.55%. What this theory says is that I should get a premium because I can't cash out the T-bill that I bought at 3.35 and exchange it for one that pays me a higher interest rate. So this whole concept is a function of a rate that rises once I've already got my money tied up. So I'm going to work this and I'm going to show you what the rate should be given a liquidity premium that has been set by the market of 0.08%. All right, so let's see what we've got. What I know is that when I solve for this, I'm going, I'm looking at a period of one and I'm looking for my rate and I'm looking at the second year. So basically what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to take one plus, and I'm going to call this my current rate. Right? So I'm going to use that abbreviation of the current rate and I'm going to multiply it times 1 plus, I'm going to call this my future rate, right? plus my future rate. And remember, I'm dealing with this liquidity premium, which is now going to be LP. So following me so far, I hope. And now I've got to take the whole thing math-wise, and I'm going to bracket this. And I'm going to raise it to the power of 1 over 2. And because I'm solving for a rate, I've got to subtract it from 1. So, um, fun fact to know and tell, raising any number to the power of 1 half is the same thing as your friend the square root key. Why they don't just use the square root key or square root notation, I have no idea. It would be a lot easier, though. Um, all right, so I'm going to go ahead and solve. So I'm going to say 1 plus my current rate of 0 0.0335, which is that little first part. And now I'm going to multiply that by 1 plus the future rate which is 0 0.0355 and I'm going to add my liquidity premium. Now, don't fall into the math black hole. This is 0.08% which means I've got to move that decimal place because it isn't 8%, it's 0.08%. So, follow the bouncing zeros and I have to go one, two, three of them and then my eight, right? And then I'm gonna close this, put my funky brackets up here because I'm gonna use the same notation these finance guys do and I'm gonna say minus one. So now remember inside out, so I'm gonna work these two parentheses first before I get all crazy with my one half 
and I know that I'm going to end up over here at 1.0335. Do a bunch of math over here on the right, and I end up with 1.0. My writing is terrible. 363. Three. Don't forget, I still have Mr. One Half up here, right? Still got to subtract it from one because I'm doing a, um, a rate. So I'm going to multiply those two guys inside here together, and it's going to give me 1.0710 to this ridiculous power of 1 half minus 1. Getting close. So now I'm just going to use the square root. And what I know is that the square root of 1.0710, not like I know that off the top of my head, but I use my calculator, is 1.03489. And I'm always going to carry it to enough decimal places that when I um, convert this back to a... Um, a rate or a percentage that I don't lose all my numbers and I'm going to subtract one and I know you guys can do that math in your head so what I end up with here over here follow me over to the side of the screen is 0 0.03489 and I've got to multiply that by a hundred to get it back into a percentage and now I'm at 3.4 8.9% or 3.49 depending upon how accurate you want to be but what I what this tells me this 3.489 is that because I bought my T-bill my one-year T-bill at a rate of 3.35 percent and the rate a year from now is going to be 3.55 percent because I've got my money tied up in this um, in this lower interest bearing that the liquidity premium for a two year investment 0.08% tells me that my rate should really be 3.489% to compensate me for a year at 3.35 when I know that a year from now it's going to be 3.55. So I hope this helps. Hang in there and keep the faith.